Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. So what is Vectors to Final? When do we use it? And when should not we use it? All that coming up next right here on 2020 Flight Simmers. Do you want to know what it is? Take the blue pill. The story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. So today we're going to be going over three separate scenarios that ATC may be vectoring us into our final approach. We're going to go over the vectors to final option in the G1000, when you should use it, and when may not be such a good idea to use it. So let's get right into this. Oh, and before we do, make sure you go down below and hit that subscribe button and tick that little bell, because you don't want to miss any of our future episodes. All right, so let's hop down to the MFD real quick and take a look at our flight plan for today. As you can see, we are going to be inbound to Las Vegas. Now let's zoom out a little bit here. And the first thing that we need to do now is to enter a procedure for our approach. So to do that, all we need to do is go right down here to the procedure button, give that a left click, and then we're gonna highlight select approach and then hit the enter button. Now for today's tutorials on each scenario, we're gonna be using the ILS-01 left. So we just need to tick enter on that, and here's our transition options. As you can see, we have a couple different options here, but the main one that we're focused on is the vectors transition. So we're going to highlight the vectors transition, hit enter, and then we're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom where the load section is. Once we get to that point, you're going to smack on that enter button, yes to the lawyer language, and now we can see what the vectors to final transition does for us on the GPS map. So as you can see, we have a really nice long line all the way down to runway 01 left on the runway course. Now this is gonna be very, very helpful if ATC is vectoring you way out here so that this way you have a great visual as to when you may be lined up on the localizer or approach course. Let's open up the flight plan now and take a look and see what we have over here. So if we tick on the flight plan button, if we scroll through this, we can see that we have all the different waypoints along the approach route and we have our altitude restrictions over here on the right. So in this tutorial, ATC has vectored us parallel with our approach course. Now we know our final approach fix is at the naughty waypoint, and it also shows that right here on our flight plan. So now what happens when ATC is gonna be vectoring us to our final approach? Now, most of the time, everybody's gonna to wanna to come over and hit the procedure button and activate vectors to final. So if we highlight the activate vectors to final and then hit the enter button, I want everybody to take notice of what happens to all of the waypoints on our approach course. Did you notice something that happened? You are now missing all of your flight restrictions along the approach. Now that is not really gonna be good if you're getting vectored way out here past your final approach fix so the second biggest problem that you're gonna run into when you're using Activate Vectors to Final is that you will have no idea when you are crossing each waypoint. And that's because that puts you on a direct to course to your final approach fix. So even if you know each of your flight restrictions, you will have no idea when you are crossing each waypoint unless you're up there doing a bunch of math. And the last thing that you wanna do is to try to map fly and looking at your GPS to try to figure out if you've crossed it or not. So you definitely don't wanna go down that route because ATC is already gonna assume that you know what all the flight restrictions are. One of the other cool things that activating Vectors to Final will do for us, if we step over here to the PFD side, we can see that it has automatically switched us into Nav1 mode and it has populated the frequency in the Nav1 frequency as well. So that is a really cool feature of using Vectors to Final, especially if you are very close to your final approach fix. If we look on the GPS map here, we can see now that we have a beautiful magenta line all the way down into our final approach fix, and then from there down into the runway, we have a white line extending. Now that's gonna turn magenta once you cross the naughty transition, so don't worry about that. Now let's go into scenario number two, and let's say that ATC is not gonna be vectoring us right to our final approach fix. 
and they're going to be vectoring us way down here in our approach. So let's talk about what we would do in this scenario. So the first thing, let's go ahead and reset our CDI back to our GPS mode. And now we're gonna come back over to the procedure button and we're going to select a different approach now. We're always gonna use the ILS-01, but instead of using the vectors transition, we're gonna use the crudy initial approach fix. Some people may be confused as to which one you would wanna use for the approach, now let me explain why I'm using the Crudy initial approach. So if we go up and highlight the Roman initial approach fix, you can see here that it's just a skew of a straight in course to runway 01 left. But if we go down here and highlight the Crudy initial approach, you can see that it is right in line with all the other waypoints. So that's why I'm gonna choose the Crudy initial approach fix. So we just need to hit the enter button, go down, and this time it doesn't give us a load option. So we're just gonna hit the activate button, yes to the lawyer language, and now we have all of our waypoints populated in here for the approach, as well as all of our altitude restrictions over here on the right. So let's go to the map real quick, and let's zoom in. ATC is vectoring us again parallel with our approach course, but instead of vectoring us right to our final approach fix here at the knotty waypoint, they're gonna have us come in between the tray and the condo waypoint. As you already know, if we choose the vectors to final approach on our flight plan, we're gonna miss all of these minimum flight restriction altitudes. And that's not gonna be good, especially if we're farther out and we have multiple flight restrictions to hit on the way down. So what do we do? Well, let's talk about that right now. So ATC is vectoring us somewhere in here between tray and condo. So what we would wanna do is come over here to the flight plan menu, give that a tap, and then we wanna activate our little highlight cursor in here. To do that, you just need to tap on the center knob. We're just gonna scroll down to the condo waypoint. Now, once you have that highlighted, you just wanna step over here to the menu button and you see activate leg at the top. Now we're gonna hit enter on activate leg and it's now gonna activate a leg between tray and condo. Perfect, that's exactly what we wanna do. So now we can just hit the activate button and if we scroll out or zoom out on our flight plan here, we can now see that we have that beautiful magenta line between the tray and the condo waypoints. And if we go back to our flight plan, we see now that we have all the different flight restrictions that we're going to need along that route for today. And nothing has been erased, so to speak. Okay, great, so now that we've gone over that, now the third situation we're gonna talk about is, well, let's say that ATC is getting a little backed up. They need to vector us way down here, far away from our initial approach fix at the Crudy waypoint. All right, so let's take a look at this. Now the first thing that we would wanna do is again, go to our procedure and we are gonna select the approach, the ILS-01, and we're gonna pick the Crudy initial approach fix. We're gonna go down to the activate, hit enter on that, yes to the lawyer language, and now we can see that we have the approach now with all the different altitude restrictions in our flight plan. Okay, perfect. So at this point, ATC has given us vectors way down here. Okay, so now what do we do in this situation? Well, we already know we don't wanna use the activate vectors to final, because if we do, we're gonna lose all of our flight restrictions here on the approach. So here's how we're gonna get around that. Now, we also wanna have that beautiful long line down here, because that is gonna better help us to line ourselves up on the approach course. How we're gonna do that, instead of using the vectors to final, we're going to use a nice little function called the OBS function. So if we step over here to the PFD menu and go down here to the OBS button and tap on that, we can now enter a course in our OBS. Now, if we pull up the flight plan, if you're unsure what course we're gonna use, if you see all the way down here, we're gonna be using course 013. Okay, so all we need to do is step over here and adjust the course knob until our course heading shows 013. All right, perfect. So now we have our course set in at 013, and if we step over here to the 
MFD side, we can now see that we have that beautiful magenta line all the way down to the crudy waypoint. Well, that is awesome. So now we can line ourselves up on that approach fix once ATC gets us close enough. Here's the other thing that we want to use. Now, being that we do have multiple different step downs before we get to our final approach fix, using VNAV would be really helpful. So we're going to show you how to incorporate the VNAV into this approach for today. So if we step over here to the PFD side, we can see that our first flight restriction is at 8,000 feet and our last flight restriction is 5,300 feet. Perfect. So all we need to do is to come over here and set our altitude bug for 5,300 feet, which is our last flight restriction on the approach. And that's also where we're going to pick up the glide slope. All right, so now what do we do? Well, we know that by using the OBS function in the G1000 that it will not follow a V-path. So we need to figure out a way to exit our OBS mode, but not throw us off our course. Now, a lot of people are going to say, well, all you got to do is just tap on the OBS button once we get down to the crudy waypoint. But let me show you what's going to happen right now if I were to exit the OBS mode. Now, we're going to imagine that we're already in nav mode and we're no longer in heading mode. So if I were to come over here and exit OBS mode, watch what happens over here on the MFD. You see what just happened? So it's now going to turn the plane to go back to our original location of where we started from, where we entered OBS mode. <laughs> and that's not what we want because we're already going to be lined up on the approach. The last thing we want to do is exit OBS mode and it throw our plane off. So let's go over what we're going to do to solve this problem. So let's turn our OBS dial back to 013. Now ATC is vectoring us towards our approach fix. So we're going to start turning the plane perpendicular to our approach course. Now that ATC has vectored us to our approach course, what we can do now is activate the nav mode. So we step over here to the MFD side and just tap on the nav button you can see that the GPS is now highlighted in white in our autopilot. The heading is still lit up in green, so that tells us that we are following the heading bug still and not the GPS. So now what we're gonna do is continue to intercept our approach course, and as we get a little bit closer, the GPS then will light up in green and the heading will drop off. Now once we get to that point, then we'll discuss of what we're gonna do to then move forward to be able to use VNAV on our approach down to runway 01 left into Las Vegas. The GPS has now picked up on our approach course and it is now lining us up on the approach course. Now once it gets the plane lined up, we will then talk about what we're going to do to exit the OBS mode. Now I think something's going a little crazy with the G1000 still because it shows that we are underneath or it shows that we are above the glide slope here, but we haven't even hit the crudy waypoint yet at 8,000, so I don't know what it's telling us to do. So make sure you don't hit your VNAV until you get to that waypoint or until you get to your first waypoint of when you're going to exit OBS, because just like it happened to me when I had it in VNAV, it wanted to try descending us already. Okay, so we're approaching our crudy waypoint, and now we're going to talk about what we need to do. So the first thing that we're going to do is head back over to the flight plan menu and tap on that center knob again. We're going to scroll down to the tray waypoint and we're going to go up to the menu and hit activate leg. And another way that you can do this and would probably be easier if you use the direct to button right to the crudy waypoint. To do that, just highlight the crudy waypoint and hit the direct to button. Then you would be able to exit OBS mode as soon as you have activated that. It's gonna ask us to confirm, we're gonna hit activate, and then there we go. Now it is gonna be lining us up, and that is our next active leg. Now come back over here and exit the OBS mode.
Now, when we exit the OBS mode at this point, it is not going to try to bring us back to our original location over here. It is going to now continue on the course in which we're on. So now that we have activated the appropriate leg and we have exited OBS mode, now all we need to do is we can come over here and hit the VNAV button. Great, so now that we're in VNAV mode, it's now going to follow that vertical path all the way down to our final approach fix. And as we can see, our VNAV is functioning and we are on our V path all the way down to our final approach fix now. So now what do we do once we get down to our final approach fix? As you remember, when we use the activate vectors to final, it also changed our HSI over here and switched it to our NAV1 and also populated the NAV1 frequency. Now it has already changed our frequencies for us, but it has not changed the HSI into NAV1 or NAV2 mode. All right, so it looks like we're getting very close now to the condo waypoint. The next waypoint is our final approach fix at the naughty waypoint. Now the G1000 has a really cool feature and you just saw it happen for you, is that it will automatically switch once we get close to the localizer. At this point, we can either allow the plane to go all the way down to our final approach fix, and that would be at 5,300 feet, or at this point, because we are now in localizer mode and we have the glide slope populated, we can now just pop over here to the MFD and hit on that approach button. When you hit on the approach button, you'll notice a couple things over here at the on the autopilot menu and that the GS is now highlighted in green, lets us know that we are now in glide slope mode and the vertical path has dropped off of the autopilot menu. So at this point, we are now using the localizer and the glide slope to bring us in all the way down to our landing. Well, I hope everybody got a lot of information out of this today. And if you have any questions, please post those down below in the comments section. If you haven't done so already, make sure you go down there and hit that subscribe button and tick that little bell. And if this video did help you out today, smash on that thumbs up button. It really helps us get found by viewers like you. Well, to all of my flight simmer friends around the world, keep the blue side up. And we'll see you on the next one. Thanks, everybody, for watching.